bit of a story. Uh, my name's Raymond Finn. I'm originally from South Australia, the place called Udnadatta. But uh, in the 70s, like after 72, there was a, there was a, a spirit moving, a revolutionary spirit. Um, I, I was in a home in Adelaide um, for three years, locked up. But out of that, I, I was looking for something, you know, where we can all join. I think a lot of people from that 60s, early 70s was looking for something, looking for something a way out, out of this whole situation. Anyway, I, um, I was working through a lot of the cattle properties. I ended up in Birdsville, Queensland. I heard about this fella, Dennis Walker, and what these fellas were doing. So I was trying to head out that way. So I was going through the back way to Brisbane. Going through my country, Birdsville Track, Murray, Birdsville. Then across the Quilpie, a little place called Quilpie. When I first got into that state, I was just hitchhiking around, mainly mail, mail trucks that casually come every three weeks or something. You had to wait around, get something scrapped around for feed. But when I got to Quilpie, I didn't know about that place was a police state. Adelaide's pretty, uh, South Australia's pretty laid back. But when I got, when I got to Queensland in, in that, that era, that late, uh, early 70s, it was on. And I, I was there, I came into town, and uh, this policeman pulled me up. And he said to me, who, who are you? I told him who I was. Where are you going? I said, I'm going to this town here. He said, no, you're not. You've got to get the fuck out of here. I don't want you here. You look like a fucking troublemaker. Piss off. I said, no, I'm going straight in there. And he, he started threatening me. But I just kept on walking into town. And uh, he followed me. Then I just got a little bit of people started wondering what was happening at the other end of town. And uh, the, all these white fellas turned around, look, there's a black fellow there. Please, you know, they, they, that little town, that policeman had them black fellas shaken. And here I was, I just sort of saying what I had to say because I was angry, I was uh, thirsty on that road, and I just wanted to shave to sit down. But that policeman forced me to kick me in the main street there. I stayed there for about uh, three months, and that police harassed me from from you know from morning to the night. I was by myself, and I was trying to tell them other black people, "Look, you gotta stand up for yourself." This, no, don't, don't that boy man, no, don't, don't, he'll kill you. And uh, one one time, I just had enough, and I was on um, drinking. And one 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 night, the the, the, the Marys they come in brothers there and I was fighting in this hotel and um, and in Krupi then it's a small little town they had me and they police ran in there they didn't grab the marriage but they grabbed me and slammed me against the uh, pool, uh, pool um, table and they started kicking them into me but I, that time I was there I got a job as a worked on the railways and from that part to that where I worked you know, it's like a distance from here to uh, those tents over there. But all the anger and all the frustration over that period of time. I escaped from that policeman and I ran across and I grabbed about four bottles of uh, empty bottles of coke, run over there, filled up the petrol, and my, my, at that time my mind just exploded. And I was the first black fella Ran across there, grabbed those bottles, and in a period of time I came back, lightened up in this little place called Quilping. There's a little bit of write up about me in the newspaper, 1975. And I took out the hotel, police, police station all in one night. And I didn't like authority. And they grabbed me, they, sh they shot at me three times where I escaped. But I heard this voice one day, lay down, lay down, go back and lay down. So I ended up in my auntie's place. And when I woke up, I had about five guns on my head. And they said to me, you bought an eyelid, boy, and you're gone. So they, they were arguing, they, they bashed me up, they took me to the police station, they were going to take, 
what they do. The whole town was outside there. <laughs> kill him, kill him, kill him. Yeah, get rid of him, you know. Yeah, I belong to this town. But that's my people's country. <laughs> and uh, I had to wait for two uh, detectives. They flew straight from Brisbane. And they talked nicely to me. Great, gave me his shirt. Because that shirt I put in for a week. To blow these places up. <laughs> this is my story. This is the first time I'm telling it. Because that shirt from those two five, those four men, that somehow I took these police on, these two police in this town. And uh, they came and they talked to me. They were very nice. They had photos and they said, Do you belong to this organization? Do you know Colonel Gaddafi? I said, no. <laughs> Do you know Dennis Walker? I said, no. <laughs> Do you know so-and-so? Do you know so-and-so? Uh, they couldn't believe how quick I ran across and come back in that space of time. How could anybody do it? If you're desperate enough, you can do it. If I can do it. <laughs> and uh, from that on, you know, we're in a military battle here. So be ready. And I say to these people here, our friends out here, where are you uh, occupying? I got from my family here from South Australia. We got Victoria Square there in Adelaide. Go out there and occupy that place and set up a tent. Go to every city and set up. Because you've got support. You've got support and use that support. You're not on your own. And I want to say that use all the resources that you got. Forget about the doll, forget about thing, and because things will come to you if you're going in that proper direction. Yeah, true. And uh, because things didn't happen, you know, just out of that. Things happen for a purpose. And I could have got shot that night, but somehow a tree sort of saved my head because I can feel these split, splinters coming off this tree. Boom, and it hit me in the face as I was sliding down these three bottles left. <laughs> 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 And Quilpie's built on a little, uh, little uh, the, the, what they call the Warrigo. Goes around that town. I went there and I swam right around. Come out through the back way. Every bastard was down that town looking at where, where I was. <laughs> so that was sort of, you know, that scored a bit too far. But, I mean, we can go even further. Yeah. I mean, not in that way. <laughs> but I done it myself. Yeah. And a lot of those fellas that were there at that time, they started looking up at me, oh, look, you, that man, that bully man, you, nobody couldn't tame, but you tamed him. <laughs> you stood up to him, and uh, that's what we do. If we set an example, then our young, young people can follow. Yes. And I was young, and then I was 20 when I done that. But that life and that uh, energy was there. And I say to these lot of young fellas here, you've got the energy there, you've got the fire. Use that. You got the you got the whole world at your fingertips now, and use it. I just had two hands, and I said, "The fact is, I'm gonna just take these people on." <laughs> and that's what I've done. And my old auntie, you know, when she got that first little snippet of me, she kept it all those years. And about two years ago, she showed me, and she kept it all those years. And she's she gave it to me like uh, two years ago, and said, "You know, you did something." I mean, you've done a bad thing, but there was something in you that wanted to change, you know? There was a change. I knew something about you. And I just give this piece of paper back to you because I want to show my children and my grandchildren that people can make a change in some way or another. So um, we've got a lot of support set up wherever in Adelaide, Victoria Square. That's why I'll be... That's where I'll be. That's my country. I, I went to school in Blackwood, Eden Hills. And uh, where the home I went to is uh, Blackwood, uh, Colbert Home. That's where Lowitcher, I've done to you, but she lived in Corn. But that, that old place moved up to the Eden Hills. And uh, we, I don't see eye to eye with that old auntie of mine. Yep. But uh, there's some issues that we need to set up in every city, in Perth, wherever. I live in the Surrey Hills now. I'm not a uh, middle-class black fella. And uh, I was down at the uh, Martin, Martin Pleasant. 
there was a small occupied group there. And probably we were the only black fellas coming past there. And it's sad to see that. We need more black fellas in there supporting it. And put up a ten, another 10 embassy there from here now. Yeah. And put up that word sovereignty. And uh, don't worry about what, you know, if we're going to get cut off with a doll or anything like that. We have support. Look, look what's coming in for us to feed us every day. So I just wanted to just say, let's go out there and fight. Fight in a militant way. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take these people on. Maybe this building here would be our embassy. Maybe this here is our embassy. We're going to have a dream. We're going to have a dream that this is our place. Right here. And accommodation for the elders. Yes. All right.